my adore my 64 my commodore 64 hi there and welcome to a let's type episode from the commodore 64 appreciation society this is a series where i reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine and then when i finish typing it in i play it Today's game is Caves of Ice from the September 1983 issue of Compute. This is the first program that we're going to type in from this issue, but not the first 3D maze game we've done. I recently did a video for the game Rats from the July 1983 issue. That one was a lot of fun, and I've left a link in the description if you want to check it out. Caves of Ice was initially written by Robert Sook for Apple Computers, and it won a Byte Magazine game contest in 1982. It was then ported to other platforms by both he and Marvin Bunker, who coded the 64 version that we're typing in today. In the game, we find ourselves stranded in a 5x5x5 structure made entirely of ice. There is an exit somewhere in that frozen cube, and it's our goal to find it. It sounds like a lot of fun. Let's get typing. The program fills about two pages in compute. And interestingly, it's identical for both the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. According to the notes, you'd need at least an 8K memory expansion on the VIC for it to run. Since it has to run on the VIC-20, the game is limited to the VIC's 22 column display. That also rules out any of the 64's fancier features like sprites or a wider color palette. And because the two machines use different memory maps, you won't see any poke commands in the listing. Everything is written in plain basic to keep it compatible. This one's a bit tricky to type in. The 3D views are built entirely from the system's built-in symbols, and the programmers pulled off some clever tricks to stitch them together into different room layouts. The lines of code that hold these symbols are dense, complicated, and not easy to proofread. Fortunately, Compute did an excellent job with the transcription here. In earlier issues, I've had to manually count out long runs of spaces or symbols because they weren't clearly noted. By this point, though, the magazine had developed a smart notation system that made it clear exactly what to type. Without that, a game like this would have been nearly impossible to enter accurately. Also, I'm typing this using the Vice emulator, and some of the symbols are surprisingly tricky to produce in its default setup. I've had to switch back and forth between symbolic and positional keyboard layouts, and I even keep my original Commodore 64 beside me as a reference just to make sure I'm getting the right symbols. It's all manageable though, and honestly, it's been a good learning experience. The key is just moving slowly and focusing on accuracy. That said, I won't be surprised at all if some of the rooms end up looking a little glitched the first time I run it. I'm getting close to the end of the program now. Aside from that one tough section with all the symbols, the rest of the code was pretty straightforward to enter. I gotta say though, it feels a little weird typing in a game that doesn't use any pokes, peaks, sound, or color at all. Alright, I've saved the game. It comes in at 17 blocks on disk, just over 4K. You can also see the earlier backup I made right after finishing that tricky symbol section. Now I'm just hoping I didn't make any serious mistakes, because I really don't want to retype that part again. Haha, <laughs> here we go. Wait, not yet. Let's list the program first. Okay, for real this time. Why, yes, I would like instructions. <laughs> and I can't even see them. That's an easy one. We're missing the dollar sign after left. Let's try this again. Here are the instructions, all crammed over to the left so they work for the VIC-20 display. Oops, all except for one line. I'll fix that later. And now for the moment of truth. Here we go. Oops, another tight mismatch error. Ah, uh, I see the problem. There's an equal sign where the plus sign should be. Another easy fix. I've made a couple of fixes now. Let's just save it and try again.
Here it's building the maze array. Okay, fingers crossed, let's go. Oh, sweet. This looks really good. There is one little glitch that I can see right above the entrance going down. It looks like I just missed a space or something. I'm relieved. All right, let's move around a little bit. This seems to be working really well. The rooms are displaying as I would expect and movement is smooth. I'm going to review the code and hopefully find that glitch and then come back to escape from this giant ice cube. I went back through the code and found a few small mistakes, including some in that tricky symbol section. One line in particular had multiple errors, missing a space among other things, and I'm guessing that was the culprit behind the glitch. But here we are, let's try to escape. The game drops us in a random location. I think the best strategy is to head for an edge and then work my way around the perimeter. Looks like I've reached the north edge of the level. Now I can start working my way around the perimeter. This is definitely challenging. I think I know where I am, but since everything looks the same, it's really easy to get lost. The key is sticking to the edges. I'm starting to get the hang of this. I've stopped changing my orientation and now I'm only facing north. That makes it much easier to navigate and keep a mental map. The downside is I can't actually see what's on the south facing walls, but that's fine. If I try moving south and nothing happens, I know there's a wall there. This game is really well put together. It's fast, smooth, and works flawlessly. And it's easy to see why the author won the Byte Magazine contest with it. I do wish there was a way to mark where I've already been. Some kind of digital breadcrumb. That would actually be pretty simple to add. Another neat idea would be hidden markers in each level that give you a little clue about your location. But even without any of those extras, it's still a lot of fun. I've explored four levels now, covering the full perimeter of each, and I'm finally on the fifth. If I can't find the exit here, I might break out some graph paper and start mapping it, just like I used to in games like Bard's Tale. Right now I'm working my way along the south wall of level 5. I can't see if there's a door yet, but I'm really hoping one turns up. Oh hey, I escaped. Amazing. What a great little game. A multi-level 3D maze like this must have felt pretty groundbreaking back in 1983. Huge credit to the programmers and kudos to Compute for publishing it. This one was definitely a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. If you have any memories of typing in your own programs or any thoughts about this one, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Hope to see you again.